get a little bit of a headache. A little bit of a headache, if you don't mind. Been out with Lucinda Pryor Palmer and the ladies of questioning team. Ooh, horsing around. Them girls, they know what's going on out there, I'll tell you. Absolutely fantastic night. I'll tell you what happened, right? You won't, you just won't believe what happened, right? Anyone used to watch Crossroads? My mother bloke who played Adam Chance. Do you remember him? Never, ever walk up to him at a tequila slammer party and say, yeah? Do you want to chance it now? <laughs> Three and a half hours in casualties, I took, oh, having a bottle of tequila removed from me, it was very, very painful. New movie coming out, remaking the uh, Six Wives of Henry VIII. Uh, I don't know if they got lined up for the girls, uh, I think they got the Sawala girls, Uma Thurman, but obviously, there's your lead role right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there's your lead man, there's your top actor right there, playing, playing royalty. Uh, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, well, I don't do consumer affairs, you know that. I leave that to Watchdog and Sue Cook and all people like that. But why, oh why, oh why, do they sell things like this, all right, which looks for all the world like a children's toy. You give them to your kiddies to play with, and I can tell you it ends in, oh, look. Why call them junior hacksaw blades? <laughs> now, to me, that means suitable for age six, all right? <laughs> Absolute nightmare we've had there. And I've had a big row going. I must tell you, Richard and Judy were around the other day. <laughs> and I've had a little bit of a thing, a bit of a ding-dong going with them, because they come in and uh, I'm a bugger for a fragrance, you know that. Oh, I'm always going, and, tsh, 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 and I've got me plug-ins and things. And they come in and they go, lavender. I say, yeah, you, you can't. Hyacinth, yeah, you can't catch them out. But I'll tell you what happened. I had a big argument with, uh, with Judy about this one. These are beautiful, beautiful bath crystals, right? And, and you see that they're beautiful there, look. <laughs> Come to me bath crystals. And what happened was I put them in a bowl of water like that, and I scattered them around. And Judy came in and she said, oh, Magnolia. I said, it's not. I said, I've caught you out this time. She said, well, what is it? I said, it's come to me. Well, she's gone. She said, it doesn't smell like come to me. Well, I said, well, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry, lovey, but I don't know what's what. Let's have a look at what we've got in here. If you ever have a problem, if you ever have a problem with brass, right? Your brass don't look very nice. That's what you need. Brass, yeah. Got anything silver? Doesn't look very nice. Silver. Makes it look pretty. Maybe you go to the toilet. And you, have a look and you think, oh, that, that doesn't look that good. Just use that. There you go, look. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> I'll sort that out a treat. Oh, look at this. I always put this out. Whenever, uh, whenever the lads from uh, Blur or Oasis come round, I always give them them to eat. You see? Sticks. Love this. That's uh, super. And if the Spice Girls come round, I give them them. Dip sticks. <laughs> right, let's see what my fan we has been... Well, I don't... don't what, what, what can this... What, what have we got here? Look at that. Oh, look, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I know. They're lovely. It's a little rabbit. It's not a real rabbit, obviously. Ooh, no, it's not. It's a toy <laughs> rabbit. It's a toy, a little children's toy. And, oh, look, it's cute as well. Look, Pamela with her kit off, look. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's put them in there and let's see. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, very funny. Ha, 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 ha. As Tom Jones would say, look, there you go, that's a nice little, a little toy chest. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, as, as it happens, you're very lucky to find me in, because normally this time of night I would be out and about. Yeah, all right. See you later. Just been visiting a very good friend of mine, Vanessa Phelps, uh, talk show host, very, uh, very talented TV person. I'll just pop down and see her. Have a cup of tea with her. This is where she lives, here. Yeah. I'll tell you what I've got for you now. Uh, you know the Ross is a very good friend of mine. Not Francis Rossi in the status quo boy, but the Ross is Jonathan Miles and Paul. And um, Paul did a, did a program here uh, where he's interviewed a man. And uh, lads, I'm sorry, but if you've got your girlfriends with you, keep a damn tight hold on them, because they're about to meet. Woo! He's 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 the male equivalent of. <laughs> <laughs> The real man who makes husbands jealous. He's a gigolo, he's too handsome to live, and he joins us live from Manchester. Good morning, Mr. Paul. Remember that phrase, too handsome to live. 
Well, Nolan. Good morning. Now let's oh. get straight to the chase, Paul. <laughs> How much do you charge? Just depends on who the woman is, mate. Depends how attractive she is. So, if it's somebody you found completely unattractive, what's the most you've managed to cop for? 600 quid, mate. 600 pounds. What did you have to do to earn that handsome sum? You take them, wine and dine them, and obviously end up in the bed. And is there any kind of money back guarantee if they're not completely satisfied? Or are they always completely satisfied with you? Always satisfied, mate. Ask Pete Stringfellow, he's gone now, but... There's certain techniques I can't tell you over, over there now, mate, but you'll have to pay me to tell you. Does one of them involve any all your sentences with the word mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little minx, Rossi. <laughs> I was going to do that joke, you bastard. <laughs> but no, he has got... And guys, just look and learn, because he has got a chat up to... Because you know the problem that we have? Of course, what do you do when you meet a beautiful woman? What's the first thing you say? So you think uh, this lad from Switzerland might like, think he'd be able to turn Blackburn Rovers round? <laughs> what about Keegan coming back to Fulham then? It's a shame Sally Gunnell's had to finish, isn't it? <laughs> you fancy anyone for the basketball? That's not what they like! That's not what girls like! Just look. Yeah. How would you chat up Natasha? What would you say to her? Well, basically, she'd come towards me anyway. I wouldn't make the move towards her. She'd have heard about me from You'd have various to make friends the move. of hers, and she'd come towards me. But basically, I put her at ease and everything, and talk what women like to talk about, which is not sport. Okay, you got that. <laughs> Lesson one: Don't be talking to them about the scrambling racing. All right? As not, they want to talk about something a little bit more sophisticated. And he's got his finger on the pulse of what you, lady. Too handsome to live, ladies and gentlemen. That was Paul's phrase, I think. He's got his finger on the pulse of what these girls want to know about. So what would you talk about then? Macrame? Yoghurt? Well, women oh, like... Oh, don't be bloody facetious, please, Paul. <laughs> All right? The man's a master of his craft. I'd like to talk about EastEnders for some reason, Coronation Street. Yeah. To me and you, it's not exactly stimulating stuff, but to women, they seem to think it's fantastic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Uh, firstly, I don't watch EastEnders or Coronation Street. Every um, woman in the world does. Liar, liar. <laughs> Every woman in the world watches it. You're just a liar if you say that, all right? You know you do. You, hey, hey, I'm going to talk to you about Coronation Street. You know you want it. <laughs> It's fantastic. He, he then, I have to say, there's been a thing about his reputation. He says, you know, at least I've got me good reputation. And Paul's a little bit distraught about that. Up to now, he's made a bit of sense, but he's about to go goo goo ga ga, okay? But actually, Cameron, if you're working as a gigolo, what reputation have you got, Paul? Well, plenty, mate. I mean, let's put it this way. Everyone in the media prostitutes themselves anyway, don't they? I mean, I'm a bit confused. The presenters... Say that actually, I, 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 okay, I, do judge, I don't take money to go to no, bed with people. <laughs> the same game, but they don't like calling it prostitution, do they? But, you know, it's not that there's a difference between... Hey, there's a difference thing. between doing the most intimate act between two people for money and presenting a show on talk TV, isn't there? Not really, mate. I mean, it, you've got standards. You know, you've got Jonathan Ross as a brother. You know, does Jonathan Ross lower himself to do all types of programmes? I ask myself. <laughs> hey, 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 no, hey, hey, not just Jonathan Ross, all right? Not just Jonathan. The, uh, there's a great cornucopia of sports personnel, everyone. They're all prostitutes. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Jonathan Ross, Stuart Pearce, Chris Waddle, they all do Mickey Mouse adverts and get a lot of money. And at the end of the day, people think it's a big joke, but, I mean, why? It's, it's, it's pathetic. And what you do is it pathetic then, Paul? Well, not really, mate. I mean, I look at it like Tony Blair's leader of this country. I mean, does anyone know what he thinks? Because he just mimics everything Margaret Thatcher ever did. <laughs> and women pay me to shag him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker! <laughs> no, I will not give way. You will, because that bird paid me £400 for a bunk up. I should be Prime Minister. That was completely, completely great. Here he is ranting on now quite wonderfully. And then, gentlemen, don't forget, too handsome to live. <laughs> <laughs> There's two things I hope this man hasn't got. <laughs> A gun and my phone number. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
about it. I don't want him ringing my wife and talking to her about Coronation Street. <laughs> Sweet talking that gal right off her feet, do I? But he's, he's completely gone now. Apparently, the reason is that down south, we're, uh, you're all nothing, right? But it's up north, it's there that the blokes... And if you went up north, don't even try it, blokes, because they've got it sewn up. This is Manchester, and for every guy in London who thinks he's a cool dude, he wouldn't pass... Muster. <laughs> the time of day, maybe wouldn't pass... It's muster, it's an old military phrase. He came up to me, he wouldn't pass muster. That's what he says, isn't it? This is Manchester, and for every guy in London who thinks he's a cool dude, he wouldn't pass water in Manchester. <laughs> See, this gets kind of confusing. See this here? Well, my carpet is a bit dirty. So I thought, all right, and I hired it, right? But what I didn't know is she... It's not that. It's her and the kid and the dog. They all turn up. They've been in my house like two years. I can't get rid of them. But she's all right. She does a bit of cooking. But he just molds all that and he molds. She holds the dark like that. And then the kid comes along and spills paint all over. I don't know what to do. I'm too kind-hearted to swing him out of the street. But I think I might have to. And also, that's her real size. She's only like this. You might come down there. Why you got a little dwarf thing all over there? It's all right when Sting comes, because he thinks she's quite a reasonably sized bird, but <laughs> for the normal size people, it's just a bit embarrassing, that's all. Oh, bless them. My very, my very good friend, the Nolans, have just made a, re a new record, especially for me. They came round my house about six weeks ago now, and they were so loaded. Wow! Wow, them girls can tuck away that gin. Uh, absolutely. And they sprawled. I think two of them were over that sofa. One of them was kipping on the desk. One of them was sleeping in the big trumpet there of the phonograph. And the other one was hanging off the hat stand. Absolutely spark out, bless them. And they, they went into the recording studio and they, they wrote a song about it. Oh, look, that's the, the Nolans crashing down. No. <laughs> that's lovely. And this is some of the product that I've been on the market for years and I've only just discovered it. Look at that. Absolutely superb. Have you seen it? It's a, it's a smoker's toothbrush, which is lovely because you go in the bathroom and you want to clean your teeth and look, you want a fag? And they put a little thing <laughs> in there. Put a little snout in there for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's lovely, of them, isn't it? Put a little snout in the in with, because I guess that's why they call it a smoker's toothbrush because <laughs> there's a toothbrush in there and a cigarette. <laughs> It just amazes me, the things that they come up with. I'll tell you what I want to do for you now. I want to show you a film that I made. I went up to, uh, I believe it was Sheffield. It was somewhere up north. I don't know. They all sound the same to me because they wear cardigans. And, uh, <laughs> I went up and we got on very well because I, I, I know quite a lot about Whippet, so we chatted. And uh, I met this girl. Now, this girl had a very terrible thing happen to her. She went to Greece on holidays. A lot of, I know the, the young ladies do. And she uh, got a little bit drunk, which I know quite a few of the young ladies do. And she started taking a few of her clothes off, which again, I'm sure you, you're all no strangers to, and danced semi-naked on a, on, the, on a bar, okay? And she wound up getting put in jail. And uh, when she came back to Sheffield, she became a bit of a celebrity because of this. But this girl don't need to be able to do interviews, because you know how she does her talking in the recording studios? Because, yes, I'm a big fan, just as you are, of Ella Fitzgerald. I like Aretha Franklin. I love Janice Joplin, but oh, when I heard this girl's voice, wow. I have to excuse me for a minute, my crazy feet just won't keep still. <laughs> <laughs> Get dirty. Dirty. <laughs> you can just see them American kids running out of the shops. Hey, excuse me, have you got a copy of Dirty Dancing? <laughs> That's what we're kind of dancing to. Uh, but Wayne, of course, Sven got, got a master plan. Local entrepreneur and nightclub owner Wayne Chadwick is the man who spotted Sarah. He wants to make her a star. Well, we feel very confident that we're going to get into the charts, if not number one. And obviously we're going to number one. Now, you're judging a book by its cover there, aren't you? <laughs> Just because you wear that shirt, that tie, them braces, that cigar, that hair, that stupid, supercilious grin, doesn't necessarily mean you're a weasel. <laughs> Might turn out to be a perfectly nice gentleman. Let's see, shall we? Mm -hmm. 
one of the things that might be good is if you if we you've got an, an enormous sexual appetite that could be like, like rabbits you know, like that. i don't know i find that degrading oh shut up <laughs> who asked you you big american feminist we're having a laugh that's all it'd be great she'd get all the stuff in the papers oh she's dirty dancing she goes like rabbit <laughs> and then you have to come in yeah i'm i'm sort of a uh, oh, oh. What no, I, mean, I, I, mean like a I don't mean like a dirty rabbit. I mean a nice white rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. She's at it every night with a load of blokes like a nice fluffy little white rabbit. <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm sorry. I made a bit of fun about it before as a singer. But it doesn't matter. That's all correct in the studio. Uh, ADT, Echo, all that thing. They bring in a few session people because we know she wasn't a singer. She's a dirty dancer. <laughs> and it's the dancing that does it. It's the visual side that's going to crack it for this girl. Whoa! <laughs> hey, now, if any of you lads are feeling a little bit faint... <laughs> There you go. That, that, that could be Paul Rabdul stood up there. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. Oh, stop it, because I'm coming over all sweaty. Uh, anyway, she's got her first gig. Wayne's got her her first gig. Uh, I can't remember where it was. I've got it. I was there filming it. Oh, no, I was off that night. I sent along somebody else to film it. Let me see if I can recognise it. Right now, we're going to on a That's the Royal Albert Hall, I think. Just that <laughs> corridor as you come down. I think that's the Royal Albert Hall. Special ladies. She was... On national television press a few weeks ago... Oh, no, you don't go through the kitchens at the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> I think the Wembley Arena, there's a little bit where you might have to come through the kitchens. I think it might be there, actually. And she was accused of dirty dancing. We've got her back in England. And I think it, it is. I think it's the Wembley Arena. Yeah. Record. It's the first time she's ever sung it live on stage. The record is going to be released. Oh, no, you don't go behind the bar at the Wembley Arena. <laughs> I don't know, it might be the marquee on the 100 club. In two weeks' time, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Sarah! Oh no, the marquee don't have them silver curtains, do they? <laughs> oh no, I know where it is. It's Plumber's Karaoke Night. <laughs> mm. Let's get dirty. <laughs> And they're all into it now. And hey, a lovely, a lovely group of people have turned up. A mixed crowd. No, th there's a mixed crowd. There's drunks and complete drunks. <laughs> oh, no. We know what he's thinking. He's thinking if I market this right, we could be on a big money winner. It might not last forever, but because she could make a couple of million. What's he thinking? <laughs> what, what's going through that man's mind? Strangely enough, they actually get to meet. Him and her get to meet in the bar, and he's a silver tongue cavalier. Because he knows that she's a, her ego's a little bit. It's her first gig, her first big single, and obviously, he wants to compliment her. So he thinks, well, I need something to compliment her, singing or dancing, something. I just need something to just boost her ego a little bit, boost her self-esteem. You look really good. You know, you, you got, you got a gorgeous body and that. Uh... But what did you think? Like, what do you think now about the song? I've ever made. What do you think? What about you the song? Good. You're good. You know, you, you look really, you look really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I admire your body. <laughs> I really do. You got, you got a lovely body. You wouldn't go up to Shirley Bassey, would you? In the bar of the festival. Shirley, I'll tell you this. I, I want to tell you this. Shirley, I've, I've often felt it. I, I, I don't buy your records. I don't like you singing it. It annoys me slightly. And I, you've got lovely tits. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shirley. I've, all, I've always felt that. And now, here she is. Bless her heart. Hey, if you've had a good gig, celebrate. Have, have a couple of glasses of gin. 
have a couple of bottles. It don't matter. <laughs> you're, only, you're only going to be talking sense, aren't you? Oh, no. I, I just, Alright then. I, I just try. I'm not really single. No! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you! Well, you made me look a bit of a fool. You're not really a dancer. You're, you're really a singer. Yeah. I'm not really a singer. You are. I'm not. You're not really a dancer. I like dancing. You know, this reminds me very much of a meeting I had with Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> not, not very long ago at the George Roby in Finsbury Park. You don't like dancing. You like singing. I'm not keen much on singing because my voice is deep. But I like dancing. So it'll look good. You singing, me dancing. <laughs> what? <laughs> he wants to shag you, is all. <laughs> God's sake, you don't want to be the new Nina and bloody Frederick. <laughs> anyway, back to Wayne, because Wayne is busy making plans for a European tour for his budding star. I mean, you know, if we have to go down to London or even over to France, oh, Europe, whatever, mm -hmm. um, those costs would come first. Mm -hmm. Then we would then have... That's perfectly fair, by the way. Those costs come first and then he takes his 25% because he's going to be making a lot of money for his brand new star, so it's only fair that he gets his share. A split. 75 in your favour, 25 in my favour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What I've decided to do is, uh, she's fallen in the pool of sick in the bar, so... <laughs> do you think you could sing Dirty Dancing? <laughs> I'll see you later. ta -da. Taking over the rovers, eh, mate? Do you know what I think I should be where Jones were back, don't you, mate? What about you and Bill, mate? In Albert's Fair? Do the little moustache, mate. Look stupid, shaved it off, mate. Anyway, look, that's the chat out of the way. Down to business. Uh, I've got secrets, I can't even tell you about them, they're so good. But £200 a night, and I'll show you everything, eh? What about it, mate? Piss off! <laughs> oh, they're gagging for it, mate. They are absolutely gagging. All right, mate. <laughs> 